Well, hello and welcome. We are just delighted to have you being tuned in for Hawthorne University's All About Alumni. I'm Paula Bartholomew and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Tanya Harris. And it'll be your opportunity to ask her questions too. All you have to do is type your comments or your questions into the webinar panel and I'll present them during our Q&A. Um, today, Tanya is going to reveal how she attended Hawthorne by um, while taking care of her family and working and how her education has prepared her for doing the research needed for and creating courses and writing articles for publication. She's also going to discuss the many twists and turns her business has taken to get where she is today, building her platform for appearing um, in articles, summits, podcasts, radio interviews to get her message out to reach as many people as possible. So Tanya, I'm really excited to finally be here together. Oh, me too. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. And it, it, it's really my pleasure to introduce you and your presentation. Presentation today is From Mom on a Mission to Coaching and Creating Courses and Everything in Between. And let me tell you, there's going to be a good bit of everything in between. So um, just a little bit of more background on Tanya is board certified in holistic nutrition. She's a childhood leukemia survivor and a mother of three. Tanya is the founder of Slightly Greener, offering busy moms simple and doable solutions to reducing toxins one product at a time. And Tanya's been writing about toxins and their health effects since 2008. And in addition to her master's degree in holistic nutrition from Hawthorne University, she's also board certified in holistic nutrition and holds multiple certifications in the environmental health field. When she's not busy busting toxin pro products, Tanya can be found spending time with her family or raising money for her organization, Clubs to Cure Kids, for which she's already donated over $160,000 for childhood cancer research and family support programs in the Chicago area. So there's much more, but I want Tanya to reveal the, reveal the rest of her accomplishments. So Tanya, what a, what a, what a beautiful lead in this is for you. And I'm excited for you to get started and, and share um, everything you've got. So let's begin just with a little bit of you telling us about yourself and what prompted you and the decision to go back to school to get a master's degree in holistic nutrition. Okay. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me because I just, there, it's taken a lot of twists and turns actually. <laughs> um, um, so, oh, there's the slide. Okay. So I guess I'll start with, um, you can see that picture of me there. Um, I actually had childhood leukemia. So I'm a childhood cancer survivor. I just finished my, well, I, I might, my, yeah, I can't talk <laughs> at my 36 year anniversary mark. Um, I was diagnosed with leukemia two weeks before my seventh birthday in 1982. Um, I went through three years of chemotherapy, and you can see there I lost my hair, so there it's growing back. Um, and interestingly enough, I was treated by research back then rather than the conventional treatment because the survival rate back then was only about 20%. So my parents decided to go with research, which back then doing everything by computer was not as you know normal as it is now. Um, I was considered cured around the age of 16. And also told I might not be able to have children, but you can see there I have three beautiful children. That's a couple years old. Um, they are 15, 14, and 20 now. <laughs> so, right. um, yeah, I'm just so very lucky. But I was always told to be careful what I eat. So that always had stuck in the back of my mind. So I think mm -hmm. that plays a big role in the, um, my son was, the school called me actually in 2006 and said my son was exhibiting attention issues. And I don't know what it was, but I just didn't want to get him tested yet. So I asked for a mm -hmm. little more time. And I just, I didn't know if it had something to do with something in our home because I'd always been told, be careful what I eat and that type mm -hmm. of thing. Sure. So yeah, I asked for a little more time, made some simple tweaks to the diet. And when I went back to the follow-up appointment a few weeks later, the school no longer wanted to test him. So Maybe. I was yeah. what? <laughs> You know, just a few little tweaks, and um, they dropped the the, the re requirement to test. So bravo to you to start making some changes there and and looking into this. So um, let's talk a little bit more about um, how you really started digging into health and nutrition. That's yeah, that's definitely a big part. Is when that happened with my son, 
And we remove things such as artificial colors and artificial preservatives like the benzoate preservatives. Mm -hmm. um, I just started doing a lot more research and I realized it's not just the toxins that are in our food, but it's also what we put in our body and around our body, even the air we breathe that affect our health. So I started buying natural products and as I did keep buying them, I realized a lot of the products were labeled natural or safer, whatever. And I'd get home, do this research and find out, oh my gosh, they're not. It was, they had hidden toxins or I didn't realize too that the word natural didn't mean anything. Yes. So frustrated, I decided I needed to open an online store. So I actually got a retail license and a wholesale license and did all that good stuff and shipped products out of my home that I had carefully vetted mm -hmm. and um, shipped all over the United States. I wanted to help other parents with the results I had with my son. So when I found out what these toxins in our homes were doing, um, I really wanted to give parents the best information possible along with having this store. So that's when I really decided to go back to school so I could understand, really understand what's going on in the body and how these toxins affect them. And then I really research everything very thoroughly before I do anything. And so looking for a school was no exception. And that's when I found Hawthorne. Well, good for you for being so careful and, and vetting everything, including your schooling. So mm -hmm. how, you know, with all of that, how did you find Hawthorne? Well, I really, I made it a practice process and I, I looked a lot I, for a really long time. There are so many schools out there and there are so many options. So what I decided to do after just looking forever and not able to narrow down, I actually started looking at a few people who were doing something very closely to what I wanted to do mm -hmm. after I graduated. So what I did was I kind of looked at their bios, their background, their websites, and I found out where they went to school or what their certifications were and also what their business models looked like. And then from there, um, I narrowed down how the school was teaching. And I knew I needed an online school with young children, but I also needed some accountability. And so some had physical classes where you had to go to, so that was out. Um, but really, I found Hawthorne and it was such a good mix of, it was online, the, there were lectures online, but you had an instructor, and that's what I needed was that accountability. And um, I loved the fact, and this was a while ago, so I'm, I don't know if it's still the same way. The exams were oral with the instructor over the phone, and yes. that was terrifying to me, and that's what I wanted because I knew I'd get the best education possible. So I had an amazing instructor. Um, and the other thing was they had deadline that you had deadlines and structures and some schools didn't which is great for some people but i need that structure and that accountability so that's really how i chose Hawthorne. i love that um your approach to it was very different than anything i've heard you started mm -hmm. researching people and what yeah. they do and how they do it and that led you to looking for the school that could provide you and, and get you there too. So bravo. Well, <laughs> raising a family. And I think this is such a key point because, you know, Hawthorne University is full of, of busy working adults, often with family and it's mm -hmm. juggle time. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, you think I can, I can carve out somehow 15 to 25 hours a, a week additionally for my studies and get through this while I'm juggling it all. So, um, I'd like to hear a little bit more about that and how old your children were when you started your master's at Hawthorne. Sure. They, I think I was looking back at the ages and the years I went. I believe they were around 12, 7, and 6. So my mm -hmm. youngest, I think, was in kindergarten. And mm -hmm. there's a picture of my family right there, my husband and my kids. And um, this was right around the time I started. So, again, I needed that accountability, but yet I really have to say that Hawthorne was amazing with my schedule, and a couple times when I was sick or my kids were sick, I was able to reschedule a couple things, but yet that structure really kept me so that I kept it as much as possible and only used it for emergencies. <laughs> so it was also very flexible, and I appreciated that, too, as a mom, and you know, I was always working, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but I, I had to have that definite schedule. And even though with the three kids, it didn't always quite work out, um, I had to snag study time and to do projects when I could, which sometimes meant late nights and working on weekends. So mm -hmm. I tried to have something during the day, but you know somebody would always call from school or <laughs> you know something would happen. Yeah. But to me, I just loved what I was studying, so it didn't seem like work when I was doing it late nights and on weekends. And it was definitely tough, but I loved it and loved 
Luckily, I had a very supportive husband who helped out a lot so I could get work done or study for a final. So I think one of my biggest tips is that it really helps if you can talk to your spouse or a family member um, if they're helping you out and get them on board with what you want to do. So talking to them first is a really big thing to me. I think that's such a good point about um, informing others and soliciting support and not carrying this burden on yourself or, or having it become a burden. Mm -hmm. um, people people want to help you, but they, they don't understand what you're doing and what you're going through and the additional um, efforts that you're putting out. They can't. And um, and I just you know think it's it's so important also with with raising children and and having a busy life and you are working, so it, it's not that we so much snag time as mm -hmm. having a schedule and doing the best that we can. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody says okay, I'm going to get to this, but without having some kind of time. And if it's for you that if it was late at night when the kids were already in bed, or or time that your husband could cover for you. Uh, mm -hmm. You were you were juggling whatever you know <laughs> you had to adjust to during the day. You know, if school called you, like you said, or when your kids had an issue or needed to go someplace else, it it happens. And so does pregnancy. You know, so yeah. you were yeah. pregnant while you were in school, but it happens a lot for people that are. And so it's it's important. And I appreciate you sharing this a lot. So, um, Talk a little bit more about your online store. That's really interesting and curious to me. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I just switched slides. I went one ahead, I think. But, um, yeah, my online store is just products that I carefully vetted, and I loved it. I had it for about three years, and I would blog about these products. I've been blogging about environmental toxins since 2008, I believe, when I started this store. Um, I just wanted to be the one-stop shop for parents to come to and know they are truly getting safer products, not ones that are just nat saying natural on the label, which the term yeah. natural doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so right. it's not regulated. Um, but then I actually closed my store, I believe in around 2011 because I got my dream job. I couldn't believe it <laughs> for um, the National Association of Nutrition Professionals, NAMP. Mm -hmm. And I was their publications editor and then later their communi communications coordinator. And I just got to work with and meet amazing people, as well as to see firsthand what an organization like this does to help practitioners and um, people in this field. And then also to be able to help myself and others because some states are regulated with nutrition and how to get around that. Because what's exciting to me is this field is so full of options. So even if you can't see clients or offer nutritional advice, there's so many different things you can do. Right, and I'm looking forward to you sharing that moving forward through this presentation today. So what were your goals after you graduated from Hawthorne? Well, when I went into holistic nutrition, I didn't have a definite idea, but I just knew that there were so many different opportunities. So while I did know that I didn't know if I'd be able to see clients right away, the people that I followed were ones that had their message out on a bigger platform and in a bigger way. So that's really what I wanted. And it's kind of funny because at the time I thought I would just put general health protocols online and people would buy them or an online course and people would just flock to my website and find them, which that's funny <laughs> because that's not how it works. Um, as I found out, that's why there's so many twists and turns in this. Um, but also during my studies at Hawthorne, I got another call from the school and I'm sure you can tell by now I really hate phone calls from the school. Um, this one was for my daughter, and they wanted to test her for learning disabilities, and my original degree was in teaching, so I had mm -hmm. seen the signs since preschool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was okay with testing her right away, and they, they found multiple learning disabilities and severe learning disabilities. So after crying on the floor in my garage, and um, you know, I kind of picked myself up, I'm like, okay, I've seen results with my son, I'm going to try to do the same with my daughter, even though I know, you know, you can't cure learning disabilities, but we can at least maybe lessen symptoms or make it easier for their bodies to detoxify these chemicals. And so I really dug in deep. And um, I think about a year later is when my thesis came up a year or two later. And so I did my thesis on ADHD. It was improving attention deficit hyperactivity disorder with nutritional intervention interventions, which was just perfect timing. I was able to help not only my own children, but now I help clients um, in a group setting with um, things that they can do to also help their children through toxins and their food. So that's Beautiful. 
really yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it was amazing. And then that's when I decided to get, I wanted to go further. So I also got board certified in holistic nutrition. And then I put a couple of things here. Um, I did that because I wanted to make sure, for one thing, to differentiate myself in my field with this education, but also to show a commitment to my clients and to my audience that I'm board certified so that I have to keep up my education and I will continue to earn credits. And that's yeah. one of the big things. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah, doing go, going into business um, in a, in an evolving field such as nutrition requires, <laughs> you know, <laughs> continuing education, in my opinion. And yeah. so good for NAMP and the HNCB and and for you for moving forward and and becoming board certified, and um, for letting others know the, the importance of it and the value of it, both from the inside of the organization and what it's done for you personally, professionally too. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, is it around the same time that you started your business? Yes. Yep. It was around 2015. I began my business as it is now, somewhat. <laughs> um, and what I did was I, well, it was called Gone Holistic at the time. And I was mm -hmm. creating an online course called Healthy Home, Healthy Kids. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was doing it backwards because I know now and I kind of knew then you build your audience first and find out what they want yes. for how you can help. But since I went to school and always knew I wanted to create a program, I did it backwards and I just built this course without asking anyone what they wanted. But it was my goal, so I just decided, okay, I just need to get this out. And I just went ahead with it. And I pretty much launched to crickets, of course, because I didn't build my audience first. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's my, But I also thought, oh, I'm gonna put this stuff online and everybody's gonna flock to it. Not how it happened. So um, that's why I'm hoping this can help some people because I made so many mistakes along the way. Um, but I don't regret any of them because they were all a learning curve. Um, so I did a webinar and to launch it, I only had a couple of people sign up, which to me was exciting, but also kind of like, oh, because <laughs> I think I had 400 people sign up for the webinar to bought. Yes. So it was pretty frustrating to do all that work. I was doing it week by week. So I was creating the content each week before it would go live. So I did it every Monday at four o'clock. So every Monday at four, I would present the material live and then all week work on the material to do it live on that following Monday. So that was also terrifying. I wish I would have done all of it ahead of time, but it was, it was really great because I got the first round under my belt and got that information out there. Now I could tweak it. Yes. So, well, first of all, I love the name and, mm -hmm. and, and what you've done with it. And, and and how it came about you know, it's that you got 400 people interested in it mm -hmm. was a huge success you know that you got two people to to attend and to commit commit to it was still you had two people follow through but that mm -hmm. 400 people were interested was a big um, had to make a big impression is that people needed this people wanted this they were curious right yeah. So, oh, you know, it's like I, I hear that you were frustrated, but I, I, like you said, it was a great learning opportunity. Absolutely. And it really, it forced me to get my course done, which again, was always my goal. <laughs> so that was great. And then again, I could tweak it. So I had a really good foundation. And another thing I did during that time was I bought a lot of courses online telling me how to do a webinar, how to do, how to build my list. I mean, everything. I, I call myself a course junkie, I don't know what to call it, because I bought so many, mm -hmm. really just looking for that fast track or magic pill. So fast forward a year of trial and error, a lot of trial and error. Um, one of the big things I did was I hired a coach, and this was my first one-on-one -on -one opportunity. She took a look at my course to make it easier to consume, because even for me, I'm like, this is so much information, and I don't think I'd sit there for 45 minutes going through a slide of toxins. So. Um, yes. She was a college professor at the time. She's amazing. And um, she was helping entrepreneurs with their car courses. So she really helped me break mine down into more consumable chunks. Mm -hmm. So that's when it became the Healthy Home Project because I feel like it's always ongoing. So it's more of a project than a destination. So yes. I took a lot of time rewriting it and re-recording it and breaking each toxin down and into its own video. So it's really broken down to a lot of easy to consume chunks. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I think I spent too much time trying to get it perfect. And now I know I didn't need to, <laughs> but, um, but now I had a course I could feel much better about. 
And then, so, oh, sorry, well, so, so much I, I um, you know, this fast track magic pill, isn't mm -hmm. that what everybody wants, you know, mm -hmm. in their health and their education, in their work? <laughs> Give it to me fast. And so this is, this is going to lead us somewhere. And I'm, I'm <laughs> curious and excited to see where you're going to take us. Oh, yeah. So many twists and turns. So this is just a really quick slide. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not great at selling. I'm, but what I did was, this is how I'm building my list, is I broke a lot of those chunks from that course that I'm not even using anymore and made them into a bunch of free guides. So when they want to get this guide, they just give me their name and email. And so I'm, I'm building my list that way. So this is an option, too, is just taking the information you have, designing a guide, and um, you know, using a so email software like Active Campaign and Lead Pages and having them sign up and then they get the guide and then they're on your email list. So this is one thing I wish I would have started out doing was building my list first. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, growing entrepreneurs. All right. What's what's happening? <laughs> what's happening here? Okay, so this is one of this is a turning point. <laughs> so okay. um, what I realized with working with someone to look at my course is I was, I was signing up for all these other programs, but they were basically just online programs. And, but what I realized was I could take all the courses I wanted, but they don't always equal results. And it's not that they weren't great courses. It was just because there was no, again, I need that accountability and a more personalized approach. So at the end of 2016, um, an opportunity came up and I made the biggest investment I had ever made, which was a high ticket coaching program with a high performance business coach, Todd Herman. He's the creator of the 90 day year. And the other thing is I would be committing to four trips to New York City that year to meet with him and a small group of people to work on our businesses. And I hate to fly. <laughs> I mean, like, I told my husband, I'm like, I'm going to be leaving four times this year. Are you okay with that? And he's so supportive. And he said yes. So I applied, got accepted, and it has changed everything because I really made an invest investment in myself and my business and got that personalized approach that I was looking for. And then quick spoiler alert, I was afraid to make those four trips. I made seven trips to New York City that year for my business. <laughs> Good <laughs> so, for you. Yeah, it was a really, it was an incredible opportunity. Um, it really did take me outside of my comfort zone. And I think looking back, I still can't believe that I did that, but it changed everything. And one of the things was I've, I've attended a lot of health Health and nutrition and wellness conferences which are amazing because it gives you a chance to meet other people in the industry but when I signed up for this there was no one there that was really in the health and wellness industry so I got to meet and learn so many things from other people's businesses which were nothing like my own and I really think it's one of the better things I've done to propel my business forward is meeting people outside of the industry and building relationships relationships with them and they support what I do I support what they do and it's great just to have a mastermind. I think I'm in two masterminds now. Um, and then there's so many people who have complementary fields that aren't the same as mine, but we've done some collaborations. But one of the things I can say is I met Chris Winfield. So he's another one of my business mentors. That's his picture there. And this was another life-changing moment. And I think this is a really good point to make um, for everyone is that um, I – once I met Chris, I knew I wanted to work with him also because I did a hot seat with him and Chris or him and Todd in New York City. And I had said my story just briefly and, <laughs> you know, what I do. And I always shrunk when people ask me what I do. I'm like, oh, I hate that question. Don't ask me what I do. And Chris looked right at me after I told my story and my struggles in business. And he said, you have a responsibility to tell your story. And then he went on to say, if I know that my story can help others, and if I have information to share that I'm not comfortable sharing, then I'm being selfish. And that was a punch in the gut moment because I went into this to help people, but here he was telling me I have a responsibility, I'm being selfish, not sharing it. And that has changed everything. You know, people can relate to a story. They, everybody's got their own story and their own struggles. And when we put ourselves out as perfect and not mm -hmm. having any anything else in the way of, of our life and where we're going, it's hard to relate to. And when we're real and we're authentic and honest, mm -hmm. then people can relate and will gravitate to you. Yeah, I agree with that 100% because that 
literally has changed everything what he said right there to me <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, just so many things and then todd that same hot seat told me one of the things he's had many of his clients do is to take an improv class to gain confidence and to think on their feet faster so when somebody tells me to do something i don't mess around and i signed up for improv classes at second city in chicago which i was terrified about but it was so worth it so i do recommend that to anyone who's who wants to do it it does help you think on your feet way faster and it is such a good confidence builder especially if you want to go into public speaking or something like that or even to just say what you do with confidence it's it, it was a game changer for me for sure i mean second city it's huge you know mm -hmm. to, to walk onto that stage where gilda radner it was yes. like so many people perceived, <laughs> right and it was career. our careers from there so bravo that's that's a big moment it was <laughs> yeah um, so what do you think is, is is can you identify one thing that's really changed your business to what it is today absolutely and it's one thing but it's also several things and that is investing in myself and my business so again taking base camp with todd herman they're definitely higher price programs but they've paid off in ways that i can't even imagine so i don't really think of it as spending money i think of it as investing because i've already have a made so many different relationships with people. Um, Base Camp with Todd has been amazing and their communities are just people who want to help other people. So I just really recommend investing in yourself and your business and in those relationships. And then Chris has an amazing event called Unfair Advantage where he brings entrepreneurs and media together. And I've attended all of those so far. So I've even got um, one of the coaches I work with is Kate Santition from Time Magazine. <laughs> she's mm -hmm. yeah, she's a senior video producer for Time Inc. and Money, um, and she's my on camera coach now. And I'm just so lucky. So that's something else that has come about. And the other thing is, I've learned a leap before you're ready because my business hadn't really taken off when I started doing these things with Todd and Chris. I wasn't comfortable sharing my story. I wasn't ready to invest in my business more than I already had, which were those online programs. Um, and I definitely didn't feel ready for press or media when I couldn't even talk about what I did clearly. But I went ahead and I, I jumped anyway. That was a very good jump. Mm -hmm. to say. It takes help. to um, It takes support and guidance and some skill to get us out of our comfort zone and to try something else and to, um, to be guided along the way. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. It, 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 it rarely yeah. comes naturally to, to, to very many people, so love nice. that. <laughs> yeah, you know what an amazing experience it is. <laughs> so I would say, oh, uh, I mean, was was going on camera something that was comfortable for you? No, um, Kate had interviewed me because we decided I was going to do an interview to show how I looked on camera, and uh -huh. I don't know because it was Kate from Time, <laughs> even though I knew her outside of that and we had a relationship with her. Just I froze. She made a blooper reel for me. It's hilarious. Because was, <laughs> the video was an hour and 15 minutes. Once her cameraman mic'd me up and turned the lights on, I was like, I don't know, what's your name? <laughs> I couldn't even answer my name. She, yes. It was, yeah. So definitely I've done so many things outside my comfort zone. But it's been amazing because it's gotten to me where I am now. All right. So tell me a little bit about those other opportunities that, that this led you to. Yeah, well, this was one of them. Um, after I got home from the unfair advantage last year, when I got told I have a responsibility <laughs> to share my story, an opportunity came up to share my story in a book and be a co-author um, to share my story and how I do what I do. And while I normally would have let that opportunity fly by, I jumped on it instead to kind of get my feet wet with writing and just writing a chapter and being a part of this book with so many other amazing women. And it's called um, Women Who Influenced and it just launched in March. Um, it's actually the first time I've shared my journey through childhood cancer and how I helped my own children with natural remedies and why talking about toxins is so important to me. So now this book is on Amazon and I've been able to get some press from that too. But again, it's an opportunity I probably would have let slide by, but just being told I have a responsibility and it's selfish to not share what you know if you know it can help other people. Um, so this was a huge one, the improv classes, um, all of this stuff has really played a part in getting my message out on a bigger platform. And it's really the events I participated in and the mentors I've invested in that have really helped me to do that. 
Well, congrats on this book, first of all. Um, and it, we need to write reviews for you now. <laughs> the book goes to, to, to one on Amazon, right? That's that's the that's the other marketing aspect is, and, and it's a very simple thing. You let people know that that this book is out, that it's available on Amazon, and would they write a review for you? And yeah. Then, then word gets out in very um, groundswells ways. So it's easy. It's it, it, it's the only thing uncomfortable for some people is asking mm -hmm. somebody to write a view. But most people are thrilled to be published on Amazon <laughs> and oh. to be able to support your mission. So exactly. And actually, that book um, that's my special edition cover, which I haven't even launched yet. But the book actually made number one international bestseller and bestseller. Yeah, both of those. So the regular book, Women Who Influence, that's just my um, special edition cover. So it's still surreal to see my face <laughs> on a I cover know. of a book. I, but, I love it. So. Yeah, me too. It's, yeah, it's amazing. It's been a great opportunity and experience. So where has this led and, and what does your business look like today? Well, it's a lot different than what I had in mind when I first started, but in other ways, it's kind of the same. Um, mm -hmm. After finding out what parents actually wanted, after I developed that big course, <laughs> um, when it comes to removing toxins, I really like to talk about toxins and how they affect children's health. But what I found out is they don't want a course. They just want to be told what to do and why in the most direct route possible. So what I did with that course is I submitted it to NAMP for practitioners to earn their CEUs. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm still using it, but I'm using it that way, um, which I hope to do more of in the future. So that's an option for people too. So maybe you want to train the practitioners rather yes. than working with people. So. Um, that's something I hope to do more of in the future. I changed my name to Slightly Greener after working with um, my mentor. And this feels a lot better to me because so many people didn't want the information because they're like, you know, la, 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 I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so I'm trying to be that bridge now between the people who take it too far, which, you know, or the people who don't want the information at all. So I'm trying to be the middle person showing that little changes can make big impacts on your family's health. And I kind of show them. I take them through a journey of discovering which toxins to avoid for your own family's unique needs. And then um, I've also done a lot of publicity lately. A lot has come from the book and a lot has come just from taking different opportunities. And I think I, yeah, I have a slide here. Whoops, there we go. So um, recently I've been featured in Reader's Digest. I was interviewed for that. And she knows, and I've been on several podcasts. I think some aren't listed here, but these are all the things I've had recently. And I think most of these are since February. All of these. Amazing. Yeah, you're 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 you're, you're branching out in a really big way. But mm -hmm. um, did you also have a name change of your business? Did I hear that right? Yeah, that was slightly greener. So I went from gone holistic to slightly greener. Um, I actually, the feedback I got once I started asking, and that's another big tip is ask your audience. They couldn't identify with gone holistic because they said they saw me as gone holistic. I'm already, I'm already gone holistic. They can't get to that point. You have to meet them where they are really is the big thing. Uh -huh. So, um, that's when I changed it to slightly greener because then that way it's kind of the balance. You don't have to go all the way green <laughs> or all the way holistic. You can just kind of stay in the middle even, or just make those small changes. So that's why that name change came about after asking my audience um, what they wanted. And um, yeah, so basically my business right now is a coaching program. Um, it's group coaching. I just, I have a slightly greener method I've developed and then I take my clients through that. And, um, and then the other thing I do is I participate in writing articles and doing podcasts and radio interviews. So like tomorrow I have two interviews. I basically say yes to everything, even if I don't think it's a good match. <laughs> and then usually somebody hears something and then I get another offer for an interview off of that. So that's one of the, the ways I've been able to get my message out more. Okay. Well, so you're reaching people through podcasts and articles and radio interviews and you're expanding your outreach because you stepped out of your comfort zone to actually do these things and people are hearing about you and and finding a message that they can relate to and want to want you to speak more or write more or present more in other places is that right mm -hmm. yes i just um basically saying yes to every opportunity <laughs> is really 
um, the big lesson I learned there. And just being in your comfort zone is, you're just not going to grow there. <laughs> so I always recommend just doing something that's a little bit uncomfortable because like I said, I hated to fly. I didn't want to go to New York City four times or make that money investment. So, um, but that changed everything. So it could just be that one thing that you do that you're nervous about that can change everything for you. Well, you're flying all over the place now. Are you going to, mm -hmm. don't you have your first on-camera TV yes. interview coming up? I do. I actually fly to New York next week for a speaker salon because I want to do a TEDx talk in New York next year. So I'm doing that next week. And then the week after that, I'm flying out to Philadelphia to do my first on-camera interview. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be, again, outside my comfort zone. Yeah. yeah so one I've, thing's to another here for you. Yep. Yeah, so really, I just, for starting out, these are the things I really recommend because, like I said, if I hadn't stepped out of my comfort zone, I don't even know if I'd still have a business, or if I did, I'd still be struggling, and not saying I'm not struggling now, I still feel it, but it's a different way. I mean, you, you've gone from radio interviews to spot podcasts and and different presentations, but what about summits? Have summit people found you yet? Yes, I've been on three summits and on another one that's launching next week and super excited about that because again it's child children's brain health and toxins is what I'm talking about which is how I started so it's my baby <laughs> I feel like. Yeah. Um, but the way I got two of the summits was because I just collaborated and did a Facebook live video with someone I had met through one of these business mentoring programs I'm in in New York. We just did a video and two people who had summits saw me do this Facebook Live and they both reached out and I got two summits that way. And okay. someone on the radio heard one of the summits and then I'm actually um, going back as a guest tomorrow on a radio show. So it's all just from, from saying yes and not being afraid because I'm an introvert. I'm not the most outgoing person, <laughs> but I'm learning to be and to nurture relationships and realize how many people are willing to help if you just ask. Yes. And how, so, how great the need is for the information and the resources that you have and the guidance that you can offer. Exactly. So this, this is all just, you know, fantastic information. I really appreciate it. you sharing so much and your journey. So what advice do you have for someone else that's you're really just starting out or struggling? Mm -hmm. Well, again, invest in yourself. That's that's the biggest thing, investing in yourself and your business, even if that means spending a little more money and getting a little more one-on-one -on -one or personalized coaching, because for me, that's what changed everything. Another thing is don't wait until you're ready, because if I had done that, again, I'd still be stuck, because I was not ready, especially when I invested in that media, the unfair advantage the first time. Um, but I did it anyway, and it's the, the stuff like that that actually gets you ready. And not to worry about competition, because in our fields, there's so much competition, so many people talking about toxins and food and nutrition. But what I've learned is people come to you for you. So always put your unique personality and your unique information out there. And don't worry about the competition, because you are the only you is the biggest thing I've learned. Um, yeah. Another thing is to network in and outside of your industry. So I still attend events for health and wellness and nutrition, which is awesome. But I love that the business mentoring programs I'm branching out to, especially in New York, are people of all industries. And it's so interesting to learn from other people and even to collaborate with people who aren't in my industry at all. And then you have a whole new set of fresh perspective, which is awesome. And I agree. And I think it's interesting to see and hear how other people approach their business and their work and, and how they give a presentation. There might be mm -hmm. things that you really resonate with and learn from, and there might be things that you learn and say, I don't ever want to do it like that. <laughs> exactly. That would not feel right. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. And then the one thing I wish I would have done earlier was when I showed those guides with lead pages and a email software. I wish I would have started building my email list as soon as I could, even before I was really where I am now. Like just starting out, you can do it. So, how many people do you have on your email list now? I have list shame. <laughs> I, I have about eight hundred. Mm -hmm. And. So I probably, but I, um, in all fairness, I did go in and wipe some out because this is another tip. If you have people on your email list that haven't opened an email in months, I th think I did the six month mark. If somebody hadn't opened in six months, I deleted them. Okay. Because if you have a lot of people on your list and they're not opening your emails, that actually um, hurts your email scores and then not as many emails are pushed into their inboxes. Oh, very interesting. 
Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> so I wiped my list out and I think I'm at 800 right now. Well, that's good publicity um, uh, tips that you have. Do you have any more publicity tips for people that want to um, get more exposure in their business? Sure. Again, collaborate with others. Haro, I think it's H-A-R-O dot com is a great yes. site. You'll get three emails a day, but they're looking for people. I've been published three times for Haro, Haro articles. Um, not everything always fits, but sometimes there's a really good fit. Um, I've also been a Thrive Global contributor. So that's Ariana Huffington's new platform. Yes. And you can sign up there to be a contributor. And then once you're accepted, you can just start submitting articles for publication. Mm -hmm. And again, saying yes to interviews and podcasts and articles, even if you don't think they're a good match, you don't know what will come from that. So at the beginning, I definitely recommend doing everything. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is don't be afraid to reach out to a reporter or a journalist that you've read an article for and you really liked and ask how you can help. That's another big thing. Great tips, really great tips. And, and the biggest one that I hear throughout this, this this whole conversation, Tanya, is say yes. Yes, <laughs> especially at the beginning, yep. Because there's been some things I'm like, really? I don't know if that's a good match, but. Or even if you're quaking like a leaf inside and think, how could I possibly, you know, who am I? Say yes. Exactly, who am I is a huge thing. I should have mentioned that because that's my big issue too. Who am I? Or they're going to find out I don't know as much as I say I know, but we, we know so much more than we say we know. I, I, honestly, I mean, to be an expert from what I've learned studying all this too is you just have to know a little bit more than someone else. Yes. And if you've gone through something and you can guide people, then you should do it because then you're helping. Well, this is a big bravo moment for me just to <laughs> applaud what you've done. But uh, are you thinking forward? Do you have future plans, hopes, goals, dreams? Yes, um, I do. I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book. I don't have it done. I think it's going to be called Slightly Greener. <laughs> um, I'm releasing a Slightly Greener Method, which is my signature method. Um, I have a membership site coming up, a podcast I'm launching in probably the next three months. And then to continue to write for articles for publication. And I'll say that too, Hawthorne prepared me so much for writing articles and doing research because I think so many people put things out there that they can't back up with research. I don't put anything out there unless I can find it in a medical journal or a third party. Now I know what to look for in the best types of research to do. And Hawthorne has prepared me so much for that. So I, I love to write and I'm going to continue to write articles for publication. Well, membership site, talk just a little bit more about that, of, of what's involved with a membership site and what people get and why you're doing it. Oh, sure. Um, well, because my group coaching program really is eight weeks. They can get results in as little as three to four days, but it's eight weeks of continuous support. So they can even Voxer me, which is kind of like a walkie-talkie from a store if they're trying to look for a safer product and they're not mm -hmm. sure if it is. So the membership, the membership site is really the continuation of that after that eight weeks. If they want to continue, information changes so much. So I'm going to be doing expert interviews and um, updating my Safer Brand Spy Guide because that changes all the time. And so it's just kind of another way to keep getting the information as it changes, but to keep getting yeah. new information too that can help them. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, I want people to, to know how to get in touch with you. Okay, yeah, they can find me. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, my website is slightlygreener.com, and it's being redesigned right now, but um, it, it's working <laughs> at the moment. Um, and then my email is tanya at slightlygreener.com, and then they can also find me on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube are probably the other three best places to follow me. It's another theme here, the evolving Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everything's fluid. Yes. <laughs> Yep, the good news is you can always tweak your business. What I've also realized is it's your business and, um, you know, you can tweak and pivot as you need to, which is so fun. Well, Tanya, it has been such a pleasure to talk with you today. I appreciate you taking the time and, and sharing this wealth of information with us. And I, I sure hope you'll visit us again at Hawthorne and, and continue to share the good works that you're up to. I sure will. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and for this opportunity. Absolutely. So I want to um, ask you all to help spread the word about our next All About Alumni, because we'll meet back here again on Wednesday, July 4th at noon Pacific time for another exciting presentation. 
learn how we can be as successful as our graduates are. And thank you again, Tanya, so very much for today. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yep. Take care, everybody.